This morning we have a very timely and appropriate scripture. It comes from Matthew chapter 24, verses 32 to 51. From the fig tree, learn a parable. As soon as its branches become tender and bring forth leaves, you know that summer is coming. So even you, when you see all these things, know that it has arrived at the door. Truly, I say to you that this race will not pass away until all these things happen. Even heaven and earth will pass away, but my words shall not pass away. But concerning that day and hour, no man knows, not even the angels of heaven, but the Father alone. Just as in the days of Noah, so will the coming of the Son of Man. For as the people before the flood were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day Noah entered into the ark, and they knew nothing until the flood came <clears throat> and carried them all away, such will be the coming of the Son of Man. Then two men will be in the field, one will be taken away and the other left. Two women will be grinding at the hand mill. One will be taken away and the other left. Be alert, therefore, for you do not know at what hour your Lord will come. But know this much, that if the master of the house knew at what watch of the night the thief would come, he would keep awake and would not let his house be plundered. For this reason, you should be ready for the Son of Man will not come at an hour when you do not expect him. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom his Lord has appointed over his household to give them food in due time? Blessed is that servant when his Lord comes and finds him so doing. Truly, I say to you, he will appoint him over all that he has. But if a bad servant should say in his heart, my Lord will delay his coming, and should begin to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards, the Lord of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him, at an hour that he does not know. And he will severely scourge him and give him a portion like that of the hypocrites. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. And so ends the scripture for this morning. And now, Dr. Lyle will give us our lesson for today. Good morning, everyone. <clears throat> anyway, obviously, um, we've spent part of the morning and we'll spend a little bit more uh, discussing the idea that um, yesterday was the so-called rapture that many in Christianity have looked forward to. And... Today is the uh, beginning of the end of the world in which we're going to have, I don't know, three, four months of horrible things that are going to befall us and all of that stuff. And, um, you know, we've discussed a little bit uh, families that have listened to this uh, prophecy and have place themselves on street corners and with their children and arrange the run out of money uh, as of yesterday and of course they're still around. There's a great deal that's always said about following scripture and uh, the reason I chose this particular scripture is that those that are so concerned about the rapture and always predicting the specific day that it is or that's going to be the scripture is clear about no one knows nobody knows save the father in heaven that's it you're not going to have advance warning there's not going to be a prophet out there that tells you this is it there's not signs of the time that give you dates or any of that that's just it's not that it's not the way it's done Assuming that it's going to happen and assuming that that interpretation is correct, you're not going to know about it until they knock on your door. 
assuming you're part of the rapture and you're the one that's going and not the one left in the field. So I don't get it. And people uh, in this day and age have a, a great thing about following scripture and not changing any of the words of the scripture and, and it being very precise and you must follow it to its nth degree and yet they somehow go off following these false leaders. And, and uh, earlier in this scripture, Christ had a um, uh, little section where he went through talking about many will come in his name, many will be claiming to be the prophet, many will be claiming to be another Christ. And he said, it's not true, don't follow it. Don't go there. So the first time somebody says up, it says, I'm it, don't bother. Just excuse yourself and go on down the way. So I want to get into the, the, the part of this, this particular scripture that has meaning to it. And the part that has meaning is for us to lead an appropriate life, regardless of what's going on. Not just because someone's coming knocking at the door tomorrow. That's not a reason, in some people's minds it may be, to change their life and to do something entirely different. But that's really not what it's about, is in our way of life, it is for us to lead a life full of love, expressing kindness to those that we meet as best we can to have understanding, to do the best that we see what motivates people. It's our way of life to lead an abundant life, and that's in all areas, without being greedy. Um, there are numerous people that have accumulated vast amounts of wealth, and yet in their lives they're not happy. They're not peaceful people. They spend a lot of time uh, figuring out how to hang on to what they've got, which is in some cases up to billions of dollars and then not only hang on to that but how to get more as if somehow they need it more. Now an abundant life is a life that's full of harmony. A life that allows one to open their door and breathe in fresh air in the morning and to be able to enjoy it um, it allows them as they're driving down the street, uh, we have this going on here all the time, we, we have squirrels crossing the street all the time. And uh, I don't know, Matthew was, the other day we were in that position and it was in the morning and we were headed over for school early before 8 o'clock. That's early in our life, in some people's lives that's late. If you were you know, Patsy, that's uh, four hours later as she gets up at four in the morning. So it's, it's four hours into her day. But for us, that's early in the morning. And we were, Matt kind of commented about the squirrel who took about three steps and stopped in the street and took about three more and stopped. And he just said, it's a little early for him yet. He hasn't woke up yet, right? He's, he's getting there. And he did this little trudge across the street as we waited for him. Um, before he climbed the pole, but you know he was getting started. He was getting his engines. But to to be able to just take the time to enjoy that and to laugh about it—that's having an abundance in your life. Um, you know, we we all are aware of people that seem to have a uh, uh, more than enough money, and yet they're. Uh, constantly displeased with the way things are going on, that things aren't going their way. Um, they have various uh, uh, health problems that, that interfere with what they're doing. They just, um, they just seem to have a difficult time enjoying the life that they have. An abundant life includes enjoyment. And if your money's getting in the way of your enjoyment, then you need to take a look at that situation because it's there for you to enjoy and to enhance your enjoyment. 
And certainly the lack of money does not prevent you from having an interchange with other people and having loving relationships and being kind to one another. You know, money is just, uh, I had a friend of mine a long time ago said it's social oil. That's what it is. It makes things go smoother between people if you use it that way. And if you don't, it's just nothing but destruction. It's nothing but problem. It gets in the way of people and, and interferes with a relationship. And if you, you know, Dr. Bissell, um, I didn't get this directly. I got it secondhand. But, you know, many people uh, in times of depression, in de times when the economy is in a recession, fight about money. And Dr. Bissell said that if the fight is about money, it's not much of a fight. So you have to think about that. You know, if what you're really arguing about is money, you know, you maybe want to reconsider that because between people, that should be one of the least things that's so greatly important. Um, so harmony is a very big thing. How do you live harmoniously with your neighbors, you know, with the people that you work with? This is part of that abundant life that we lead. You know, how do we step out of our door each day and be grateful for the things? How do we appreciate the beauty? I look out the window right now and I see things green and I also see a little bush out there that's yellow and, and the contrast is terrific. So I have a little brown and everybody looks at the window and there goes whatever I'm saying. Okay, so, but we look at the tree and it's dark and it has brown and tan or whatever and then we look at these lush green leaves provided us by Reverend Ken out of his uh, place, but we have these wonderful plants and then on the other side of that there's this wonderful yellow contrast. So we look at that and it has, it has significance or meaning if we take the time to appreciate it. If we don't, it's just totally useless. It, it's, I guess it, it isn't useless, it's for someone else to appreciate. But as I sit and look at that, it does something for me as I appreciate the way that that's put together. It uplifts me. It makes me feel better. This is, this is what Jesus is talking about. You know, the, the Christian life is a full, rich life, full of love, full of peace, full of harmony, so that at that time, you're full of that Christ consciousness. And when that day comes, you're still there. You don't have to, you don't have to run around and put things in order to make it happen. You know, as they arrive at the door, everything is in order. And that's part of what, what Jesus is talking about is it's the life that you have. Use that life and use it appropriately. Use it for your own sake because what the teaching is, is, is this is for the love in your life. It's for the joy in your life. It's for the peace in your life. It's for the abundance in your life. That's your life if you so choose. And you can choose to do it another way. You can choose to be fearful and you can choose to be worried and, and concerned and you can choose to, um, you know, to be constantly running around uh, concerned about what other people are doing or saying or whatever it is or what somebody else has got that you don't, you can choose that life too. But it's not the life that leads to what we want to call the kingdom of heaven. It's not the life that leads you to that elevated existence. So as part of our preparation, it's the preparation of each day. How do we, under any circumstance, whatever is going on, constantly be mindful of who and what we are? Constantly be mindful of what we can bring to each situation, regardless of its look or its appearance. And we bring love, peace, harmony, joy, abundance, health. Those are the things that we bring by our attitude, um, by our conviction of who and what we are. And part of this also deals with the idea that it doesn't matter what calamity hits, that we still have that. Okay, you know, what, <laughs> what an awful thing to come into mind, but okay. So <laughs> part of when I was on the internet today, uh, what was released at some point during this week was the three little pigs. Uh, for Disney, and we know the story of the three little pigs, but you know, some built their house on straw and some on sticks, and some one had a brick foundation and he was solid and strong. Well, we, we as 
Christians are to be solid and strong in our love, solid and strong in our, our um, harmony that we work on, uh, solid and strong in, in um, our abundance that we realize, solid and strong in the gratitude we have uh, for that which we've been given, solid and strong in the hope of our future and how good it is. You know, those, that's, that's how we are prepared if the wolf comes to the door or if goodness comes to the door, either way. That's how we're prepared. So, for us, looking at the rapture, this is how we need to look at it. And, and you know, that's a pretty literal interpretation of what's given to us here. And so we follow scripture. You know, we lead uh, loving, kind, harmonious lives. With those thoughts in mind, um, let us do our acceptance statement. Now, now may the light illumine our mind with wisdom. May love fill our heart with understanding. May the one life shine forth from our innermost being so that we walk renewed in light, life, love, today, tomorrow, and forever.